Hello, and welcome to Extreme DIY, brought to you by A20. Today is the last in our four-part in-home solution series. Today, we're going to be building an entertainment center that's customized to fit our exact needs. As before, we want to point out that this video is a general overview of the assembly steps for this build. You can download a full step-by-step -step guide along with design files and much more for free at 8020.net. That's right, Andrew. Now to start, you can see that we have everything organized. We verified that we have all of our parts and pieces, and we've also made sure we have the correct tools to build this project. That's right. Now for this build, we're going to need four different hex wrenches. We'll need an eighth inch, a three sixteenths, a quarter, and a six mil hex wrench. We'll also need some cutters to cut our panel gasket the length. So, when it comes to building the entertainment center, we're gonna break it down into two main parts, a top and bottom section. We'll start with the bottom, and we're actually going to build this upside down, starting with our top and sides, dropping in our panels, and finishing with our base. Next, we'll move on to the top. This will be a very simple frame, very similar to the coffee table. We'll follow it up with four legs, finish it off with a couple of panels, and once we're done, we'll bring it all together and put it to use. So for the bottom portion, we'll start with the two sides. It's a basic U-shape. We'll take the top bar and we'll install an inside corner connector on each end. It's not only gonna connect two bars, but also serve as a support for our top panel when we're done. So to bring it all together, we're gonna use anchor fasteners in the corners. We'll slide them into the open T-slot, and then we'll tighten it down from there. Now once we have that complete, we're going to be ready to join the two sides together using our longer profile. For that, we'll simply take the longer profile, slide it onto our inside corner connectors, tighten everything down, and then we'll be ready for our panels. Now the great thing about these panels is that they are very easy to install. We simply align them in the T-slot, keeping in mind that we have a corner notch for our anchor fastener clearance and we simply slide them into place. Once that's done, we're gonna cap them off with our base bar by sitting it on top of the panel and securing that with another set of anchor fasteners. Once that's done, we're ready for our back panel. Now the great thing about the back panel is that we've had these two holes machined in for wires and power cables. We have it in this orientation as this is still the bottom of our build. Once we're done with that, we're ready to finish the base. Now we're gonna build the bottom of the base. It's a basic ladder type shape. We have two long profiles, and we're gonna connect them together with half profiles. Now for this, we're gonna use anchor fasteners. We'll just slide them into the open T-slot, into our half profiles, and from there, we'll just tighten them down. Now once we have this tightened down, this structure will be ready to mount onto the rest of our base. So now we've got the bottom of our base secure and into place. The last thing we'll wanna do before we flip this over is add some leveling feet to the bottom of our legs. They'll simply thread into place. We'll flip this over and we'll add our bottom panel that'll just rest on the profiles. From there, we'll move on to our sliding doors. So we went ahead and installed the door track. We lined it up over the T-slot and we hammered it into place. Now for the doors, we picked a semi-transparent panel so you can see through in a glance. That's right, Andrew. Now installing the handles onto the panels is very simple. We simply take our bolt, thread it through the hole of the panel, and then screw that into the base of our handle. Once we're done with that, we're ready to install the panels into the door slide track. Doing that is also simple. We take the panel, lift it into the upper portion of the door slide track, and then set it down into the base portion. Now once we have all that installed, the base part of our entertainment center is complete, and we're ready to move on to the top portion. So when it comes to the top portion, we're gonna be adding four legs, one to each side and two to the back. These legs will act as a riser to give us some extra storage space for our entertainment center. Now while Phil's tightening those down, I'm going to install some inside corner connectors to bring the whole frame together. You just put one half in each bar, get it in position, and then tighten it down. For some extra support, we're also going to include these shorter corner pieces. All we need to do to install these is put it onto the corner, 
Make sure the top is flush with the surface of our other profiles and join it with an anchor fastener. We'll put the anchor fastener into place and then tighten everything down. As you can see, we're securing the panel to the top portion of our entertainment center. To do this, we simply take the bolts, put them into the countersunk holes of the panels, and screw those into our legs. Now once we have all those secure, we're ready to take our top portion and the base into the living room for some finishing touches. So we've got our two portions in the living room, and we're ready to drop our top portion onto our base. But before we do that, we want to add some extra support to our panels. To do that, we're going to take a socket head and a drop-in T-nut. We'll put it on the inside T-slot, give it a quarter turn, and we'll tighten it down from there. So once we have all that tightened down, we'll grab our top portion, drop it in on the inside corner connectors, and it'll recess right in to make it all nice and flush. Now once we have that in the position, we're ready to add our final top panel. Now that we have the top section of our entertainment center complete, we're ready to add a few finishing touches. We're going to start by adding some panel gasket onto our outside panels that will help prevent noise by reducing vibration. Once we're done with that, we're going to be ready to incorporate our end caps. We simply place them over the profile end and push them down into place. Once that's completed, our project's wrapped up. Well, that about wraps it up for our in-home solution series. In this series, we showcased how 8020 is perfect for in-home solutions. We built a sleek looking coffee table with matching end tables, a minimalistic yet sturdy adjustable bookshelf, a handy drawing table that's great for kids and adults alike, and lastly, a custom tailored entertainment center. We hope that you found this video useful. Now for more helpful tools, a project plan, bill of material, and other files, please visit 8020.net. Also be sure to stay up to date with 8020's Extreme DIY, as next month we'll be starting a new series focused on outside applications. But until then, thanks for watching, and as always, make it a great day.